Hi everyone, it's me again. Um, my name is Rijuta. I'm the co-digital and fashion editor at Vogue.in. And uh, thank you for tuning in to How I Made It, a series of conversations between Vogue editors and women achievers. Our guest today is a young designer whose work has been recognized by critics almost straight out of college. Um, she's written about by almost every fashion magazine in the world as the next big thing. Um, and while she's often introduced as a British designer, her roots lie in India, and that's the story that she proudly shares in her body of work. Please join me in welcoming Supriya Lele. I'm just going to add her in. We had some trouble, but I hope we can succeed this time. We're just waiting for Supriya to log, log in. While we wait for Supriya, um, I must direct you uh, to our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube channels. Do check out um, all the conversations that happened yesterday, the award ceremony. Uh, we have some incredible people uh, talking for us. Instagram's a bit buggy today. Why must you do this? Thank you for your patience, guys. Uh, we are all trying. If anyone has any questions for Supriya, please send them in. Um, and I'm sure we'll bring them up in our conversation later. Like I said, this evening at 6.30 p.m., we will be hosting the second leg of uh, Vogue Women of the Year Awards 2020. And we'll be honoring industry leaders in our champion section. And we have an exciting lineup of hosts of, uh, of the winners. So make sure you do uh, tune in. Let's try again.
Hello. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. We finally got there in the end. Indeed. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. Of course. We're super excited to have you here today. Yes, I'm so excited to be a part of it. I'm so sorry I'm late. Um, technical okay. issues at my end. I'm not the most amazing on technology, so... We're all learning and, and Instagram can be a little moody at times. So yeah. Awesome. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm very well. I'm really excited that you're here today. And uh, I was just telling everyone that we're so blessed that we've met so many incredible women this year. And to yes. be able to share all of these stories is just, it's, it's amazing. Yes, I'm so honored to be a part of this as well. Um, obviously, you know, Vogue India is a, a big, important um, part of my kind of my world. So this is great to be a part of it. Thank you. Sorry. So Supriya, yours is a journey that's been unconventional, uh, you know, uh, but your work really struck a chord with stylists, with editors everywhere. And what you've been able to achieve in, in your like sort of, sh can't say short, but relatively short uh, career in fashion is incredible. So we really want to hear more about you as a creative force, how you made it to where you are at right now. Um, so yeah. starting from the top, um, what were your earliest influences of fashion? How did you know that this is something that you're drawn to? Um, so I think when I, um, when I was growing up, um, I was always really interested in clothes. I think my mum will say that I had really strong opinions on what I wanted to wear and what, what I was interested in, even as a really small child. So I think that I... Yeah, I think I was just always really interested. I think from watching, you know, growing up in the 90s and watching pop videos and things like constantly, I think I was always looking at people's clothes and people's, uh, you know, people's outfits and their, you know, how people carried themselves. And then growing up, my mum was always really style conscious and my father was always really style conscious. So there was always a lot of conversations around clothing and, you know, an image and and those sorts of things, I think, really formed the kind of basis of my like obsession with clothes. Um, and I think I was always really obsessed with shoes, and I still am. I I still collect shoes a lot, which is kind of a problem for me. I would say. I think my boyfriend would say that it's a big big issue because it seems to be clogging up the house. Um, but yeah, I basically found that. Um, from those points going forward, I, um, yeah, I, I basically just felt that I got really interested in clothes. I got really interested in kind of subcultural references when I was like a teenager. So I would, you know, I would basically go out partying with friends and we would, we would dress up and we would, you know, I was really interested in music. So we would kind of dress to reflect what we were interested in. And this was kind of a, like, you know, before iPhones and stuff. So you had to really do a lot of your research into clothing and what, what people, you know, wore and what you wanted to wear and how you wanted to reflect what you wanted to say through your clothes. So I guess that those, those kind of formative parts of my childhood and my upbringing and into my teenage years really defined, you know, my passion for clothing and fashion really. And you come from a family of doctors, of, of healthcare professionals. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, Indian families are typically sort of, uh, you're expected to uh, take on certain careers. So when, when you wanted to venture into the creative art, what was their reaction like? Were they supportive? Was there shock? Um, no, so my parents were always really open-minded about, um, you know, my interests. And I think they saw how passionate I was for kind of creative work. Um, beyond a hobby because I, I was really really interested in that and um, I think they just you know obviously I think my family in India were, were ex or hoping that I would follow in their footsteps and sort of end up you know especially like my grandmother who was a gynecologist and things I think she was very much hoping that I would end up working in medicine but I think generally, yeah, my parents were, were really quite relaxed about it. I, I studied architecture for one year. Um, so I think they were more, they were more like, okay, when you go to university, what, 
what were you study and you know I think they wanted me to do something that was more kind of that they could see me getting more of a regular job in because I, I really wanted to be a, a sculptor or a painter at first but they were a bit hesitant so I went to university and I studied architecture for a year because I, I am really interested in architecture as well so I um I was passionate about it and I went I just didn't feel like it was the right fit for me so when I changed I then changed over to the foundation course um and at that point I think my parents were like okay well you know let's see where it takes you and it was a toss-up between sculpture and fashion and I I, I chose fashion quite last minute I have to say and um you know obviously that was the right decision for you to make but back then did you were you stressed about that choice were you in two minds where were you at Yeah, I mean, I felt really like, oh, I, you know, there were so many things that I'm in, I was interested in, you know, and I, I felt like, how can I, you know, have I made the right decision? Is that, you know, is, is taking fashion going to, you know, is that the right thing for me to do? But at the end of the day, I feel now looking back, I feel, yeah, that was the right decision because, you know, when you have your own business or you have your own brand and you're working on such creative projects with some really incredible people, you can combine all of your interests, you know, in one go, um, you know, from set to art direction to, you know, work with amazing, amazing people. So we have all these amazing creative conversations a lot. Um, and that way you kind of tickle those, you know, those those areas that you you you're passionate about and then you can yeah you can kind of explore that which i think is really good and and if you were to sort of look back at your choices uh what would you say was sort of the the moments that really put you under the spotlight that uh helped you get your work out there um so when i graduated from my masters i went to the royal college of arts and i graduated in 2016 um i got taken on by Lulu Kennedy um with the talent incubator called Fashion East here in London um and I think my first kind of presentation I did was autumn winter 17 and I think that was really a kind of big moment for me because obviously um I it was at the time Lulu had secured um the, the kind of show space in the Tate Modern so it was like my first presentation was in like the Tate Modern and it was it was amazing it was like that really fe- I really felt like I got you know that was a really big moment for me and then going forward you know there's been some amazing landmarks you know I was nominated for the LVMH prize this year when I was a finalist for that and that was an amazing experience and I think you know obviously working with uh, Jamie Hawksworth and having my uh, create like creative campaigns with him or we, you know we we've done a this project in India which we're we're making into a book which will be out soon um those have been really really kind of like big big moments in my kind of career that I never thought I would kind of hit uh, so early on um but i think again it's going back to those conversations around creativity and and meeting like minded people and you know it's not necessarily i think what's great about working in london especially is that people are very open to collaboration here i think that you know it's not necessarily oh she's a really you know new designer and she doesn't have the, you know it's more to do with okay do your kind of creative elements aligned are people going to you know be interested in what you're trying to say and and how can you communicate together and i think that's what's been really that's what's been really really nice i think yeah Did you ever feel like a certain pressure to keep delivering like one great collection after the other? I think yeah. it's like I think you always I think as a designer you always ultimately pressure yourself because you want to you want to improve each season you want to hone your skills or hone your language and I think when you're just starting out like I am you know it's about trying to establish your signatures or establish what you're about and kind of reinforce those ideas but but move them forward each season so i guess there is that creative pressure that ultimately i believe that anybody who's you know into what they're doing would put on themselves whether you know whether they're a designer or not so yeah definitely i say i would do i do <laughs> 
Um, did you ever have a an industry mentor who helped you through all of these? Uh, mentors, oh, mentors. so many. Um, obviously, Lulu Kennedy, um, Sarah Moa has been amazing. Um, there's just so many people. Like I work so closely with my uh, with my stylist Emily, um, and she's she's really inspiring. And you know, I think it's there's just a, there are amazing amazing people and there's there's a lot of support out there so I think it's about finding like a family and sort of you know working with them that way but definitely you know I'm very lucky um to have met all these people as well because you know to be able to speak to Sarah Moa and, and get advice from her on things it's, it's quite it's quite amazing yeah yeah that's what I mean when I say that what you've achieved is a lot more than um or rather what someone aspires to, you know, to get, get all that industry advice, to get that back to you. Um, I think it's sometimes important at least at a nascent stage more than just professional design. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think um, having good advice and having, you know, influential people. But, you know, I also speak to my mum so much about everything you know and she doesn't she's not in fashion but she loves fashion and you know we talk mm. about things all the time and my friends you know so I think kind of having a good balance of of people around you that you can um you know that you can speak with and you can get advice from and you can reach out to you know is that's that's really amazing and I think that that helps really push push you forward and I think having a great team as well mm. Um, it's been an extraordinary year for all of us, um, and yeah. you know, like like any other industry, we relies on connect and connectivity, and yeah. our work is very tactile. Um, yeah. You create, especially yours more than mine. Um, and how did the pandemic sort of impact your your working process this year? I mean, it's been it's been a really hard year for everybody, and I think you know. I'm very lucky to be still, you know, moving forward. And I think um, it's it's been, you know, it's been a very mixed year um, in the sense of, you know, I was I was able to still produce. I still did a collection in September. Um, we showed it in a much more kind of stripped back way, um, which felt for me it felt right to to kind of showcase the work in that respect. Um, we did, we had appointments and we had more of, you know, as much of a kind of personal one-to-one uh, -one way of showcasing the work. Um, in terms of, you know, being a small business, it's it's been really difficult. Um, you know, there's the obvious kind of impacts that are happening globally that happen to, to you know, to small businesses. And I just think it's about, you know, as much as it's been difficult, I think it's made me really value um, my position. Also, it's made me really value the people I work with, you know, my my team. We had to really work with, su well, I have such a small team anyway, but then, you know, not having that many interns in the studio and, and only working with like two people has, has really made me appreciate, you know, that sort of setup. And, you know, it's been good, but I'm looking forward to it being, uh, 2021 as <laughs> well. <laughs> yes, everybody. Yeah. So uh, let's talk a little about the LVMS. Um, yeah. Find it this year. Um, you know, there were a lot of uh, sort of bets riding on you. Um, and eventually you are the joint recipient of the award. Uh, what was that moment like knowing that, you know, you're sharing this space with everyone? Well, so the whole experience was amazing. Um, you know, I don't think ever in in your kind of design, you know, when you're thinking about becoming a designer, do you ever think that you're going to be in a room where you're going to meet everybody and, you know, everybody, like you, some of your heroes from, you know, it, it's really surreal. Um, and it's a very full on experience because, you know, you're standing there and you're, you're talking to all of these incredible people and, you're, you know, um, and, the other finalists are amazing designers. Um, so, you know, you, you, you're seeing what's, what's amazing is you're meeting people from all over, you know, not just London, you're meeting people from all over the world and you're able to see what, 
what they're creating and it's nice to be able to talk to them make friends and bounce like you know kind of have those conversations and then obviously being um being a joint winner i thought that was actually it was really really nice that was a really nice feeling it felt very true to the time of where we're at and and you know it felt it felt really nice to be able to kind of spl split that with with my peers and yeah it felt much more kind of yeah correct for the for the times that we're in i think um so let's talk a little about your work uh, oh, yeah. you obviously grew up in uh, england but you have roots in india and yes you talk a lot about that in yes. your work most, uh, sort of unconventional way in in a way that's not obvious so tell me how how both sides of your identity on the drawing board so i basically um when when i was first kind of find, finding my design language i remember you know i'd had um because i used to go to india almost every year or every two years to see family um and i would always be you know i would you know get on the plane in the uk get get down in india and they you know, just completely different you know from from the smell to the sound to everything it was just visually orally everything was completely different and um obviously those memories from even from me as a child when you know you know growing up my whole life it was always like completely different sensory experience every time and it still is for me when i go and obviously i have a lot of family in india and all my aunts and my uncles and grandparents and things so what was always really nice for me was the way i used to always really love the way my kind of grandmother dressed and the way my aunts kind of present themselves um and i used to always collect kind of old pictures of my family when i was there and i'd bring them back to the uk and i had this i have this big archive of old family uh, imagery um and i think when i was kind of starting to unpack these ideas it was very much about you know for me so much of it is about memories and and um, those kind of skeleton memories of things so um it's about reinterpreting the kind of asymmetry of the sari or the kind of draping um and kind of putting it in a really kind of minimal clean way that feels it has like you know you know to look at it immediately you may not see but then when you know what what the context is behind it you can pick out all of the kind of you know the codes are, are in there and that's because that's the way i remember things i guess you know that's what memories are like aren't they you know they're kind of like little ghosts that you kind of pick up on so um you know so on like a typical like mood board there might be you know an image of my grandma or like a you know a crop of a picture of you know family picture or a, you know i love satyajit ray films for example there might be like a film still there but then you know on the other side there might be you know um a punk image from from like the 70s or something from like Derek Ridge's book or something like this because in a way i remember thinking that there were so many parallels you know because so many subcultural references come from you know heritage reference points and vice versa and there's constant dialogue between the two and and i guess that sort of eastern and western conversation that i have within my own identity plays out really like that um yeah. and i like to think that there's such a tenderness to the way that traditional indian dress um uh, is presented and a beauty and a femininity um but then there's also you know the way i like to dress which is quite strong it's maybe has some more subversive elements to it and i think there's a really nice contrast there and a conversation between the two so that's kind of how i like to um kind of create my work in a way and i feel like in that respect it creates a really modern vision because it's it's not really you know as as i as much as i absolutely adore indian fabrics and textiles and you know the embellishments and the embroideries and everything you know it's very much for me i love the color so it's about taking the colors and taking those codes and playing with them like this i feel like that feels very true to me and and what i like so yeah um you spoke about identity um and and i see this as a pattern with many designers uh who are being more 
vocal about where they come from and really taking pride in that. Yes. Uh, why do you think it's becoming so important to speak about identity? In- well, I mean, at the end of the day, I think, you know, everyone's so different and everybody's an individual and everyone sees things from their own point of view. And I think that your identity or the way that you've grown up or the experiences you have, they really shape you. And that ultimately reflects in your design work. So I think it's really great to be able to keep, you know, to have these conversations really openly about identity and, you know, because the world we live in is, it's a diver, it's diverse and people come from all different places. And I think it's, it's super important to have those conversations because it's, it makes, makes interesting work. It makes interesting points of view. That's so true. Yeah. Um, talking about the pandemic and, and your design, uh, when the world turned to sweatpants, uh, your last collection really identified sexual confidence. Yes. You know, I would think twice before getting to those pants, but they're amazing. Thank um, you. You should totally get them. They look amazing on you. We, we've we all tried them on in the studio, like everybody, and we've all got different shapes and sizes, and it looks they look great. They are great. Uh, but... But tell me, what do, you, what do you think of when you're thinking of dressing women? What, what... Well, with this particular collection, we, you know, we were, we were in lockdown for like four months. We were working via Zoom or FaceTime or whatever. And then when we got back to the studio, we were all, yeah, in sweatpants, for sure, at the beginning. And then slowly we all started to kind of change it a bit. And and I'm quite, you know, I like to be quite casual when I'm at the studio because, you know, I'm running about all day. But um, slowly and steadily, everyone started making, you know, being a little bit more like daring with what they were wearing. I think people were just so bored of being in sweatpants all the time. And we, as a team, you know, we're all female team so we were talking about how we were feeling or you know we'll talk about oh you look amazing like that top's really cute and someone would be like yeah I just really felt like wearing something quite revealing today or da, 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 da. and so collectively I think that was just the mood that we wanted to something a bit more optimistic a bit more young feeling a bit more kind of playful like that but also celebrating those kind of codes and I think um we that's just generally how we felt at the time and and i think that's kind of how the collection came out and came together yeah so it was it was um yeah it was a lot more kind of you know open about about that sort of feeling and i i yeah i felt i felt, I felt like really good about it because you know we all as i said you know my my team's really small um, we couldn't have we really didn't have the opportunity to have fit models coming into the studio like we normally do because of the restrictions so we really spent a lot of time trying trying things on each other and and being like okay would you wear that yeah would you wear that yeah maybe but maybe it's a bit low maybe it needs to be so we were really like playing around like that so yeah that's how it happened and and I think that that turned out to be a great thing right eventually because if you want opinions of people uh, who, who have wearing different, uh, you know, sizes, shapes, preferences. It's good to have that that viewpoint always when you're, when you're definitely. And you know, within the studio, we were a different age range as well, which I think is really important. You know, um, so that's great. And I think, um, yeah, I think that's those conversations are really cr- critical. I think, especially being a women's wear designer, you know, and you're. De- we want to design clothes for women that women want to wear and so we have to try them on and ask each other do we like it or is it uncomfortable so yeah those things are really important um so talk a little about about your work uh your last campaign that you shot uh on a lot of the banks of the namada it's a really sort of personal project for you yeah um how did it feel to sort of dip into such an emotional side of you and to share it with others? What was that experience like? So it was a very intense trip um, on so many levels. It wasn't just um, the experience of shooting there. It was logistical. It was a bit of a logistical nightmare. Sometimes I forget trying to navigate India's uh, travel systems can be, it's a very different experience. So, um, but once we got there, 
so my my father's family are from Jabalpur and um my my father passed away when i was 20 and his ashes are in that river and my grandfather's ashes are also scattered in that river and it's a place that my had a lot it has a lot of significance to my to a lot of people and and also to my family so we wanted to do a project where we wanted to take well it, you know ultimately it didn't really start off as being this kind of a big soul searching project it was it was an idea that we wanted to take the kind of we'd shot the my first campaign with jamie because jamie and i are from the same we were both born in the same town in the in the uk in ipswich so the first project we shot we documented it there and then for this one we were we thought okay maybe we we take the clothes out of, out of context from the uk and put them put them in india and, and shoot them there um, and we thought, okay, we'll go to where my where my father's family are from, um, and we'll shoot there. And I, I I said to them, you know, this river is is incredible, um, and it would be amazing to, to to kind of make a project happen there. Um, so taking the team, we we really we we you know did this very much like there was no production. It was it was really like it was Jamie, um, myself the stylist Emily and the art director Johnny and Smita who is with feet casting um so that was us and then we had my uncles um like we had some people that my uncle knew that were driving us around and essentially being kind of production <laughs> and it was it was crazy it was a crazy trip we you know but it was amazing I, I sometimes think that the toughest projects are the ones that give you the most reward because we, you know, we did the beautiful campaign images and then obviously uh, Jamie did these incredible documentary um, shots as well. And then, so when we got back from India, we had this enormous body of work um, that we decided that, you know, we're going to do something actually really special with this and make this into a beautiful book and donate, you know, make a donation to Girl Rising um, with the proceeds. So we, yeah, we just, it, it was an intense experience, but it was a beautiful one. And it was, it was really nice. You know, I, I was saying this to, um, to a few people that what was so amazing for me, aside from the kind of personal significance of, of being able to, to shoot my work in India was the actual, um, seeing my work that I design and make in the UK from, from such a sort of, you know, as I was saying earlier, you know, I have this real British side and then I have the Indian side and they kind of come together. And I look at it in the context of European fashion all the time, you know, I'm looking at it in London Fashion Week and then I'm taking it to Paris. And then to take the work back to India and see it there and see it work in the context there was an amazing feeling because I was like, it works in the UK and it works here. And that for me was like a huge, like, part of the puzzle that fit in and it was so amazing that felt so good you know um I remember one morning we were shooting because because Jamie likes to shoot very very early we were shooting at before sunrise and we were on the banks and we had Nandini the model and she was wearing um, an orange check look but we'd um, Emily had styled it with some turquoise and some other pieces at the time and just behind her was a woman sitting wearing a turquoise sheer turquoise uh shawl and she had an orange sari with checks and i just thought i was like this is so wild <laughs> i just couldn't believe it i was like oh my gosh you know it, everything just sort of came together yeah it was amazing i i loved i loved it it was an amazing amazing thing yeah so tell us what's next Creatively, what's the next big project? So we're going to be releasing this book, um, which is really exciting. And then um, we're starting working on the new collection now for February. I'm not sure how we're going to, you know, showcase that yet. Obviously, there's, you know, it it really depends. But at the moment, I'm just enjoying actually being in the studio and, and trying to create creates you know um and we'll see what happens but yeah it's going to be the book and then it's going to be a new collection so 
Yes, it's exciting. Okay, we have a quick rapid fire now. Okay. So, um, tell us what's a sound piece of career advice that you want to share with a young designer or anyone aspiring to be in fashion. Be true to yourself completely, and don't think about what anyone else is doing. A designer you would like to collaborate. With. A designer I'd like to collaborate with, um, Mircea Prada. <laughs> She'd be amazing. I hope, I hope she's listening. <laughs> um, growing up, who are the women that you admired? My mother, my mm -hmm. grandmothers, my aunties, yeah. Um, a dream celebrity you want to see that reality? Oh, so many. Um, Oh gosh, I don't know. I love Chloe Sevigny. She'd be amazing. And um, tell us, if you could have anyone, anyone at all for dinner, um, who would you pick? For dinner? Yeah. Three, okay, let's, let's say you could pick three, three women you could have over for dinner. Who would you be? Three women for dinner. My goodness me. Um, I'd love to have the actress Samantha Morton over for dinner because she's amazing. I'd love to have, oh gosh, oh my gosh, this is really tough because there's so many amazing women. Oh, um, I love the musician Kim Gordon from Sonic Youth. She would be really cool to have around for dinner. And oh gosh, who else? Okay, one more. Let me think. I know this has to be quick. I'm sorry. I'm being really naughty. This is tough. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, gosh, it's Samantha Morton, Kim Gordon. Oh, probably Mutia Prada again, because then I could really ask her loads of questions about her work. <laughs> uh, who's your 2 a.m. Uh, call friend? Who do you call? Oh, my probably my best friend, Emma. Yeah, she's definitely a 2 a.m. chat, okay. yeah. Um, and tell us three things that you learned about yourself during the lockdown. Well, I learned how to try to be a bit more patient because we couldn't do anything. Um, I learned that I really adore cooking a lot more than I thought. Um, and I learned to, I guess, to be kind of more, without sounding cheesy, but to be a lot more thankful for things because, you know, that situation was completely unexpected and um, it just made me feel very grateful for kind of everything that I've, 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 you know, what I'm doing and everything like that. So, yeah. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And I'm so sorry about the, um, the big, <laughs> not being able to connect at the start. Sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm glad we got to have this conversation. So do I. It was super nice. Thank you so much for having me. It was really, really lovely to speak to you. Likewise. Have a lovely afternoon. You too. Bye. Bye.